क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर ऑन लाइफ प्रोसेसेस फर्स्ट इज द किडनी इन ह्यूमन बींग्स आर पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम फॉर एक्सक्रीशन वट एवर वी इन टेक द एनर्जी इज टेकन आउट एंड द रेस्ट गोज आउट सो एक्सक्रीशन सी इज द आंसर द जाइलम इन प्लांट्स आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर वॉट जाइलम डज ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ वॉटर the autotrophic mode of nutrition requires autotrophic auto means self so the nutrition or making food by yourself speci specially indicated by plants so what they require they require carbon dioxide water chlorophyll as well sunlight so our answer would be all of the above the breakdown of pyruvate to give carbon dioxide water and energy takes place in in mitochondria how are fats digested in our bodies and where does this process take place see in small intestine fats are present in the form of large globules now this small intestine gets some secretions these secretions are in the form of bile juice and pancreatic juice bile juice comes from liver and pancreatic juice comes from pancreas the bile salts that comes from liver as i suggested break down this large fat globules into smaller so large is broken into smaller globules so that this pancreatic enzymes can easily act on them and this is known as emulsification of fat this place or the place where this all happens is small intestine what is the role of saliva in the digestion of food saliva is very important you might have heard your parents or teacher saying always chew chew the food before you swallow it so saliva is secreted by salivary glands and where these salivary glands are situated located they are under your tongue first is they make the food soft because you know it has to be in some shape or it has to get some greasy nature so that we can swallow it then it contains digestive enzyme called the salivary amylase which breaks down the starch into what sugar what are the necessary conditions for autotrophic nutrition and what are its by products autotrophic nutrition as i suggested earlier is making food by uh, plant or anything which make its own food so this is how it is taken uh, taking place first is the autotrophic nutrition takes place through the process we known as photosynthesis photosynthesis so carbon dioxide water chlori this uh, chlorophyll pigments the sunlight these are all necessary conditions which are required for this autotrophic nutrition the carbohydrate that is the food and the oxygen are the by product of photosynthesis and these are the by product and these are the main product for us oxygen and c6h12o6 which is food what are the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration you have to same uh, give some uh, name of the organisms that use the anaerobic mode of respiration the aerobic respiration it occurs in the presence of oxygen o2 anaerobic expiration this occurs in the absence of o2 aerobic respiration it involves the exchange of gases between whom the organisms and the outside environment but here there is no exchange of gas gases aerobic respiration occurs in cytoplasm and mitochondria anaerobic 
only occurs in cytoplasm. Aerobic respiration, it always releases CO2 and H2O, carbon dioxide and hydro, this uh, basic water, basically water. Anaerobic respiration, it produces alcohols and carbon dioxide. Aerobic respiration gives you a large amount of energy and as compared to this energy, the energy produced or released in anaerobic respiration is quite low. As I said, that anaerobic respiration takes place in absence of oxygen. So, anaerobic respiration occurs in the root of some uh, waterlogged plants, some parasitic worms, animal muscles, and some organisms like yeasts. How are the alveoli designed to maximize the exchange of gases? This is alveoli. These are alveoli. See? These are small balloon like, see one of them, small balloon like structures which are present in our lungs or in lungs, you know, whichever, whichever organisms it ha have it. So, the walls of the alveoli consist of extensive network of blood vessels. And if uh, you go deep, the lung contains 300 to 350 million alveoli. One lung contains say 350 million alveoli or alveoli and if you count both lungs there are around 700 million alveoli this alveoli this if you take the surface if you uh, you know imagine that you are spreading the surface it will take area of 80 meters square that is how this large area this large surface area makes the gaseous exchange more efficient. What would be the consequences of the deficiency of hemoglobin in our bodies? Hemoglobin deficiency leads to anemia. Right? This is very dangerous. Hemoglobin is basically respiratory pigment. And what it does? It transports the oxygen to the body cells for cellular respiration. Respiration. Every cell needs to respire. Who is going to transport the oxygen? Hemoglobin. So, if there is a deficiency of hemoglobin in blood, it can affect the oxygen supplying capacity of blood. And if you have deficiency of oxygen in the body cell, it can lead to a disease which is the anemia. The normal range for ladies is 11 to 30 and for men around 14 to 16 it, the number can vary but this is the range describe double circulation in human beings why is it necessary this all is due to the heart we possess the heart has a special formation i'll show you the formation first see this heart is divided into four parts. We have right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and left ventricle. So what happens here is, first of all, the oxygen and carbon dioxide both have to be transported by the blood. That is why we have heart that have different chambers in order to prevent this oxygen rich, O2 rich blood mixing with CO2 rich blood. That is why we have four chambers, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricle. So, this oxygen rich blood from the lungs, because this is how we breathe, lungs comes to the thin walled upper chamber of the heart on the left, that is the left atrium. This blood comes from lungs. The left atrium now relaxes when it is collecting the blood, then it contracts. It has in the next chamber, which is the left ventricle. This expands so that the blood is transferred to it. And when the muscular left ventricle contracts in its turn, the blood, the blood is pumped out of the body. This deoxygenated uh, blood comes from the body to the upper chamber of the right atrium on the right to the right atrium 
this one as it expands now it is expanding now as this contracts this lower chamber which is the right ventricle it dilates so this transfer bloods to the right ventricle here which in turn pumps it to the lungs now it goes to lungs for the getting oxygen so you can say for oxygenation now here the blood coming from lung then again sending it to the lung in between so there are the heart is involved twice so during the process blood goes twice through the heart so we have double circulation why is this important and why is this necessary as we said the separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood allow a more efficient supply of oxygen in the blood cells as we just saw in the figure and this is very important in the warm blooded animal very useful in warm blooded animal like us warm blooded animal are whom that have to maintain their constant body temperature if the environment is hotter they have to cool themselves if the environment is cooler they have to warm themselves so they would require more oxygen for more respiration so they can produce more energy to maintain their body temperature that is why the circulatory system of humans is very efficient because of the double circulatory heart what are the differences between the transport of materials in xylem and phloem first of all xylem this tissue helps in transport of water and minerals while phloem this tissue helps in transport of food this water and minerals this food and if this is the root water is transported upwards from the root to all other plant parts by xylem phloem the food now the food is has to be transported and it has to be transported both in upward direction and downward direction in xylem the transport in xylem occurs with the help of the simple physical force which is called the transpiration pull so transpiration pull is employed in order to do this activity transportation here it requires some energy because it is transferring food in the form of atp compare the functioning of alveoli in the lungs and nephrons in the kidney with respect to their structure and functioning so let us see one by one alveoli we have discussed uh, at stretch in the previous question let us concentrate on nephron we have known that alveoli these are tiny balloon like structure present inside the lungs but the nephrons they are tubular structure and they are present in kidneys the walls of alveoli, alveoli are one cell thick and it contains an extensive network of blood capillaries here in nephrons they are these are made up of this glomerulus and this glomerulus along with this bowman capsules and a renal tube it has a renal tube right and it also contains cluster of thin wall capillaries you see all these capillaries are there then one more difference is the exchange of oxygen and co2 takes place between the blood of the capillaries that surround the alveoli that surrounds the alveoli and the gases present in the alveoli and this alveoli are the site of gaseous exchange when we talk about nephron the blood would enter the kidney through renal artery now it branches into many capillaries in the glomerulus the water and solute are transferred to the nephron at bowman capsule here then the filtrate moves through the proximal tubule distal tubule and collecting duct this is the collecting duct the collecting duct collects the urine from many nephrons and passes it to the ureter and during the flow of this filtrate some substances like the glucose amino acids and water are selectively selectively because they are important they are reabsorbed 
so nephrons are the basic filtration unit so this is uh, all about this topic thank you so much and take care of yourself